UAM stands for, Mario? Uniformly Accelerated Motion. You ready? Class, how many variables are there at UAM? Five. How many equations? Four. How many knowns do you need to know? Three. In order to figure out the other? Two. Which leaves you with one. Happy student. Happy physics student. There's always more than one solution. That's the problem. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get there. Don't you worry. Okay, so there are three UAM equations on your equation sheet, but they left one off. Okay? We're going to talk about which one that is, and there are subtle differences between the equations given uh, on the equation sheet and those that we have learned in the past. So we'll start with what we have learned in the past. We have velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration times the change in time. We have the change in x times velocity initial times delta t plus one half times the acceleration times delta t squared, and velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in position. Now, those are the three that they have, but notice that they're slightly different. They have velocity equals v naught plus a times t. That's the equation that they have on the equation sheet which is not exactly the same. So let's talk about some of the differences. So first off, what does this not mean, Goldsby? Um, is it the initial velocity? It just means the initial. So you'll see v sub i or v sub naught both meaning the initial. On the left, you have no subscript. What is the one with no subscript? subscript? So, That would be the velocity final. So what that is, is the velocity as a function of time, specifically at a specific point in time, so it would be the velocity final. Okay, but what about t? They use, I use delta t, they use t. So who can tell me what assumption they are making when they do this? Show me. Well, they are saying delta t equals time final minus time initial, so time final minus zero is equal to, and they just call it time final t. So be aware that they are the same equations, but they're making slightly different assumptions with them. I don't really care which one you use, but I'm, we're probably more used to using this one, but we'll use some of these as well. So the other one we have is x equals x naught plus v naught times t plus one half times acceleration times time squared. Okay. Clearly we have V naught. We talked about delta T versus T. What about here we have X and X naught? How can they just add an X naught? Sam? Um, the X naught is um, the initial X and the X is the final and it's moved it over V. Delta. Remember delta X is final minus initial, so if you bring the initial over, you'll have minus, final minus initial. So you can see it's the same equation. Good? We have velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2a times position final minus position initial. And you can see, uh, actually, I'm sorry, they have velocity squared and v naught squared. Sorry. Okay. The one that is missing, and you are more than welcome to use it, is that delta x is equal to 1 half times velocity initial plus velocity final times delta t. say x equals x naught plus v naught times t plus one half times the acceleration times t squared. Let's just start with that, that one of our UAM equations. What if we take the derivative of position as a function of time? The derivative of position as a function of time, what do you get when you take this derivative, please? Um, Double Kevin issue. I haven't asked that yet. Well, what do we get? Uh, Take the derivative for me. K1 plus. Uh, Let me rewrite it for you. I think it'll help if I do this. 
So this is like x naught multiplied by t to the zeroth power, plus v naught times t to the first power, plus one half times the acceleration times t squared. Now, notice that x is just a number, right? X initial, the position initial, just a number. So this is like having a number multiplied by t naught. This is like having a number, velocity initial, whatever it is, multiplied by t, right? So whereas before we had numbers, here we have just variables that are just represent some sort of number. Mm -hmm. Okay, instead of uh, Andrew, see if you can help. Um, so the first one would, the first term would just go to zero. Before. Realize the first one goes to zero, right, because you're just going to multiply by zero. It's just the derivative of four, for example. It's just zero. And then the next term would turn to d naught because the speed of the first power, so you just okay. one minus zero. Good. Zero. Plus? Plus a, or wait, yeah. Eight. Let's do it this way, right? We know we multiply by 2 mm -hmm. times 1 half, just to make sure everybody sees that. Multiplied by a times 1 half. I mean, sorry, I don't know what you're saying right now. No, that's okay. Better to count them out. Uh, a doesn't a uh, go away? That's okay, Andrew. Um, sorry, uh, the t stays there because it's 2 minus. It becomes t to the first power, right? So it's 2 minus 1, so it becomes t to the first power. It's the same equation as the first one. Derivative position as a function of time is velocity. Zero goes away, we have v naught plus acceleration times time. Right? It turns out, if you know derivatives, you don't need anything more than this equation. You don't need both of these. When we get to integrals, we'll show that we don't need most of them. Just need one. Okay. 